Well, Ann Coulter, of course, the uh, best-selling author. You should get her latest book, Resistance is Feudal. And uh, you can get the new column. It comes out. Actually, it's out now. You just go to AnnCoulter.com or follow Ann Coulter on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. You had a nice party last night for uh, Chris Kobach when everybody, he's running for senator in Kansas. Isn't he amazingly impressive? Well, not like me, but... Uh, well, okay, but that's a standard. No one can meet. You're you're excellent at, at a cocktail party, by the way. Oh, I am? Well, yeah, you're very good at mingling. You know people. You're jolly. Jolly? Uh, yeah. Oh. Everybody likes to talk to you. You know half the people there. Boy, you couldn't turn around last night without stepping on a billionaire. Yeah, it was quite a party. It was in a, an incredible penthouse, uh, 62 floors above Manhattan, and... Uh, yeah, funny thing was, Chris brought his, um, he has, what did, he, what did he say, five daughters, I think? So he brought his 16-year-old daughter with him and said, this is her first visit to New York. <laughs> Peter Thiel's multi-million dollar apartment and then went to Nello's for dinner afterwards. I, I told her, this is totally the typical New York experience. You come here as an intern, you'll have an apartment like that, you'll be eating at Nello's every <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is New York. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, talk about Chris Kobeck. He's a, a guy who's uh, very good on uh, a lot of issues. Yes, well, he's very smart, and uh, you know, I know, I know, um, conservatives are trained to hate Harvard and Yale graduates, and I do yes. hope I had something to do with that. But on the other hand. You know, if you get a guy who, who's made it through the um, um, Chinese-style brainwashing of these Ivy League schools and still emerges, you know, loving God and loving his country, that's really something. And if you think about I mean, look, Senator Cotton, Senator Cruz, Senator Josh Hawley, they could use some help with another articulate Republican. So let's just start right there with the fact that he's, which he will never, ever mention, but... Um, Harvard undergrad, Yale Law School, Oxford, and not as, you know, just a cheesy little Rhodes Scholar, but a Marshall Scholar. That's oh. completely on merit. So, But you wouldn't know it. He's, he's a sweet Midwesterner, very uh, nice. Uh, by the way, the reason everybody's talking about uh, this is a guy people see as a presidential candidate in a few years. Um, yes, I, I would, I would say so. Though he's really, he's really very, very Kansas. I mean, he's from Kansas. He lives on 60 acres out there. He went straight back there after Oxford. Um, so it's not like he's just, he's just, as, as you often see, people, you know, are spending their lives in Washington and, and then dash back to some place they happen to have passed through once. So, oh, I'm running for Senate. I mean, he is a real Kansan. Um, but but his specialty and uh, among the many things he's done and the reason um, I am I am so high on him is when he was working for the Bush administration. Okay, he was briefly in Washington. Um, he designed the E Verify system, the only government program that's ever worked. And what does it do? It protects American jobs for Americans. Um, it allows employers in about ten seconds to check to see whether an employee is using a real Social Security card, whether the the employee is a citizen or a legal immigrant. Um, yeah, let's see the Democrats vote against that. So he helps design that. Um, he, he wrote, or had a big hand in writing, um, the law that drove liberals crazy, and I could finish the sentence there, and you know he's a great <laughs> patriot. Um, they called it the Papers, please, law in Arizona. Remember that where um, they were deputizing or the law said that Arizona law enforcement officials, if they arrested someone whom they thought was an illegal, um, they could ask and hold them for ICE, i.e. they were allowed to follow federal law. Um, and liberals went absolutely mental. They described it as some sort of Nazi provision. Papers, please. Papers, please. Remember, you heard that for, 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 for like a year, the, just these hysterical denunciations. It goes up to the Supreme Court, it was upheld nine to zero. <laughs> nine to zero. Thank you, Chris Kobach. He's the one when Trump was going around saying properly, um, I'm going to build the wall and I'm going to have Mexico pay for it. And you have all these idiots sneering, oh, how are you going to get Mexico to pay for it? Chris Kobach said, and the president has unilateral authority to do this, by the way. I don't know why he hasn't, I don't know why he hasn't brought it up, our President Trump, your president. Um, tax remittances. Um, um, Mexicans in this country, mostly illegal aliens, 
um, a little bit of the Mexicans who aren't who aren't yet citizens, send back on average twenty billion a year to Mexico. That is money being sucked out of the American economy, going you know directly into the pocket of um, the richest man in the world, Carlos Slim, or at least he sometimes is the richest man in the world. He may have fallen to number two. Um, sending money back to to Mexico, well, under Treasury regulations, the president can say, "Fine, send the money back, but we're putting a ten percent tax on it." Yeah, all right, I like that idea. Uh, yeah, he's very smart. Um, very good on, on the issues that matter. It would be great to have him on Judiciary Committee. I mean, I think we've been reminded this week how the left, the, the, the Supreme Court, I mean, this whole Kavanaugh nonsense, um, which is what my column is about, by the way. I highly recommend it. Um, it's so, called Penis Story Falls Apart with Flaccid Hearsay, um, because this is just unbelievable what they pulled this time. And why, you ask, Mark Simone, are liberals so hysterical about the Supreme Court? It isn't just abortion. I know we all think it's just it's crazy feminists who are just they, they're, they're terrified of Roe v. Wade being said. Nobody even cares about that anymore. Well, I mean, people care about it. But. No, it's but look at all these judges shutting down everything Trump is trying to do. District court judges that this is how liberals want to rule through their own hysteria. Just get you know one. They want somebody like Judge Tiger out in San Francisco, who's who's even defying the Ninth Circuit. And just he's he's like the king of the universe. No, no, we may have no border. He's a district court judge. Um, they want they want nine Judge Tigers on the Supreme Court, and then they won't have to worry about elections yeah but that uh, kavanaugh story was a whole new uh, turning the page for the new york times to i mean it's one thing to slant twist spin but to make up a story from nothing with no <laughs> accuser no victim no anything that's yes. Am yes. amazing that they went that far yes well there were so many things i loved about that that the, that story and i don't care if they're embarrassed and they're trying to move on now they ran it in their newspaper. They dumped this this defamation on on a lovely man and someone who's already been through a lot, as through his ham family. I'm writing about that article for the rest of the year. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine uh, all the president's men, Ben Bradley, in the uh, conference room there when he says, "Well, where's the victim? Oh, there right. is no actual victim. Well, where's the actual accuser? There is no actual accuser." Yeah. Okay, go. No, with it's it. a guy <laughs> of of all the. You, if you watch MSNBC, as I know you and I do. They keep talking about, you know, the scores of witnesses, and the <laughs> FBI didn't even talk to the witnesses. And then we find out that the witnesses, they, they heard, I quote, something happened to Debbie. Yeah. And if, you know, at some point in her four years at Yale, that's, that's the alleged witness. There's only one person who even connects the two names, um, Debbie Ramirez and, and, and Brett Kavanaugh. There's only one person... He wasn't in the room. He heard it from a guy who wasn't in the room. And the guy he claims he heard it from denies it. Yeah. <laughs> also, the New York Times described this guy as uh, nonpartisan. He's Hillary Clinton's lawyer. His well, wife's that's an the other one. That's the Max Steyer one who's yeah. bitter, burning with rage that Kavanaugh is on the Supreme Court and he isn't. This Max Steyer went to Stanford Law School around the same time as Kennedy's son. He didn't get a Supreme Court clerkship himself. And yes, what is his claim to fame? He defended Bill Clinton for whipping it out in front of Paula <laughs> Jones as a governor, which, you know, admittedly, that's not nearly as bad as doing it as an 18-year-old freshman in college. And when he was defending Clinton in the Paula Jones case, the guy he was battling was Kavanaugh, their old bitter enemies. No. Yeah, remember, this is a, we'll take you back. For those of you who are paying attention to the hearings, Kavanaugh, after all of this nonsense and crap was dropped on his family, when he gave his statement, he said something to, to the effect of, the, this is being brought by people who were fighting old battles over the Clintons. Yeah. Um, because Kavanaugh was working for Starr, and yes, Max Sire was a lawyer on the other side. And, and on the MSNBC, oh, he's crazy. He's imagining some sort of crazy conspiracy. And then we find out this whole thing was being driven by someone who was fighting him when he was working for Ken Starr against Bill Clinton. This is exactly <laughs> what he was talking about. Wow. Uh, if you want to uh, read the column, you just go to AnnCoulter.com, or it's up on Twitter. You can get Ann Coulter's latest column. Also, get the book, Resistance is Futile. I think it's the best book she's written so far, Resistance is Futile. You go to AnnCoulter.com, follow Ann Coulter on Twitter and uh, all that stuff. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark. Bye-bye. All right, take care.
Oh, and everybody uh, check out the webpage. A lot of good stuff up there.